The empirical formula is the smallest whole number ratio of the atoms in a molecule or compound. I'm just going to write molecule. The empirical formula is different from the molecular formula in that the molecular formula is the exact number of atoms in a molecule, whereas the empirical formula is just a ratio of the atoms in the molecule. In this video, I'm going to teach you how to calculate empirical formula from percent composition data. I'm going to assume that you have an understanding of empirical formula because I have talked about that in a previous video. And I'm also going to assume that you have an understanding of percent composition because we've done that in a previous video as well. Um, so let's just jump right in and get started. When you are given percent composition data and you're asked to calculate the empirical formula, I think that it is easy if we pretend or we assume that we have 100 grams, like a 100 gram sample of this particular compound. This particular compound is 23.76% sodium, and that is a percent by mass. So if we have a 100 gram sample that is 27.36% sodium, we know that there are 27.36 grams of sodium in this sample. And again, this is, I'm saying, if I'm assuming that my sample is 100 grams, 27.36% of that mass is going to come from sodium. So that's the first assumption that I'm going to make. And I'm going to do the same thing for the rest of the elements here. So we have a 100 gram sample that's 1.2% hydrogen, which means that we have 1.2 grams of hydrogen. And our sample is 14.30% carbon. So that means that we have 14.30 grams of carbon if we had a 100 gram sample. And then also 57.14%. Um, that means 57.14 grams of oxygen in a 100 gram sample. So what I have done here in this first step is just simply converted all of these percentages into masses, into grams. What I need to do now is convert all of these masses into moles. So for all of these, I need to convert out of grams of that particular substance and convert into units of moles. The reason that we're doing this is that in a molecular formula, like so let's just write H2O, the coefficients in this formula, empirical formula, are based on the number of atoms of hydrogen, not based on the number of grams of hydrogen. So what we really need to do is figure out how many atoms of hydrogen we have and how many atoms of oxygen we have, or in this case, how many atoms of sodium, hydrogen, carbon, and oxygen. So what we're working on here is a conversion from moles into atoms. Now this conversion factor between grams and moles, as you know, we've talked about many times, this is the uh, atomic mass that we would get from the periodic table, which I'm not going to go look those up, but you know where to find them. And this is going to convert our mass of sodium into moles. Let's just do that same first step for all the rest of the elements that we have here. One mole of hydrogen, its mass is 1.0079 grams of hydrogen. One mole of carbon, its mass is 12.011 grams of carbon. And I don't want to encourage you to memorize these masses. It's not really a good use of your time. I just have a lot of them memorized because I use them all the time, but I did not try to memorize any of them. So in all of these steps, we are converting from grams into moles of that particular atom. Now, like I said, what we really want to do is figure out how many atoms we have of each one of these things. So if we wanted to convert into atoms, our next step would be to say that one mole of sodium is 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd atoms. Now, I'm actually not going to do this step. I'm going to write it a couple times, and then I'm going to stop. So I don't want you to copy this if you're taking notes. For every single one of these four elements, sodium, hydrogen, carbon, and oxygen, for every single one of them, this step is going to be exactly the same. So for all of these, as we go down, we're going to be multiplying all of them by Avogadro's number every single time. So we're going to do the exact same mathematical operation to every single one of these. And that means it's actually not necessary to do that. We're going to be doing the same math to all of them. So to save ourselves some time, we're just not even going to do that last 
last step, we're just going to stop it right here. It is true that multiplying by Avogadro's number is going to change the numerical value of each one of these, but it's going to change the numerical value of them all in the exact same way. And since we're just looking for a ratio and not the exact number, it's not necessary for us to take that last step. So we are basically ready to do some math on this. Let me open up the calculator here so that we can um, do the calculations here. We are trying to calculate the number of moles of each one of these things. So we have 27.36 grams of sodium divided by 22.99. That is 1.19 moles of sodium. For hydrogen, 1.2 grams divided by 1.0079. That is 1.19 moles of hydrogen. Don't be weirded out when a lot of these or some of these end up being the exact same number. That's not unusual. 1.18, that's pretty close to the same number. 57.14 divided by 15.999. 3.57 moles of oxygen. So what we have calculated here is the mole to mole to mole to mole ratio of these three elements. And kind of, I'm going to erase my, my water thing up here, kind of, we've already figured out the empirical formula. So it is 1.19 moles of sodium. It is 1.19 moles of hydrogen. It is 1.19 moles of carbon and 3.57 moles of oxygen. So this is the empirical formula, except for you've never seen empirical formulas written with numbers that are decimals like this. That's not how we express empirical formula. So we wouldn't want to write it like that because we like these numbers to be nice whole numbers. So we're actually not done yet with our math here. What we need to do is take these numbers and we need to make them pretty, turn them into nice whole numbers. The way that we're going to do that is look at all four of our numbers, find the one that is the smallest number, in this case it's 1.18, and we're going to turn that into 1 by dividing it by 1.18. And whatever we do, we have to do the exact same thing to all the rest of the numbers as well in order to preserve that ratio. So we're dividing all of these numbers by the smallest, which is 1.18. That's going to turn that into one mole of carbon. And for our 1.19s, it's going to be pretty close to one. To the right number of sig figs, it's just one mole of, of uh, sodium and one mole of hydrogen. For oxygen, we're going to get something other than one. That is going to be, looks like, three moles of oxygen. So now we have our molecular formula, or excuse me, the empirical formula with much prettier numbers. One sodium, one hydrogen, one carbon, and three oxygen. And there is the empirical formula for that particular compound.